Welcome back everyone to Showbiz India and today it is my pleasure to welcome Rupak Jain to Showbiz India and to Studio City here. It's Thank a you. hot day and you've been so sporty and come out. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So let's start from the beginning. Tell me what was the day that defined that you felt like, you know what, I want to be an actor? Well, I was in high school and uh, in New York City and I'd always wanted to do theater. But I was a sports guy. I was in uh, baseball, soccer, uh, and you know, wrestling. Wrestling was my sport. And one season I decided not to do baseball and do theater because I'd always been curious about theater. And it was this play nobody's really ever heard of uh, by Tom Stoppard. And the moment I stepped on stage, it was like electricity. It was something came alive in me. And uh, I never wanted to step off. That was, I had that strong a feeling, like I, I don't want to leave. Freshman year, I got to Harvard, and it was actually the first thing I, I signed up for was the theater, just because I loved it so much. I, it was the freshman theater program. And I, I did a play, I had a lot of fun, and by the end of my first semester, my freshman year, I got my transcript, and I looked at it, and there were a lot of uh, grades that were not so great and I wasn't used to seeing that. And then I had to really think to myself, well, am I gonna keep going with this? Am I gonna do this year after year and work hard and I don't know, go to med school or law school? I mean, can I do that? Is that the path I want for myself? And I knew instinctively that I, I couldn't. I couldn't go through. I'd worked hard to get to Harvard, but I couldn't go through it anymore. And I said, well, what do I care about? What am I passionate about? And uh, instantly it was, it was the acting. It was like, that's. That's all I, I care about, that's all I want to be, that's all I want to do with my life. So I told my parents they were, <laughs> they were not too thrilled at first, uh, but you know, they were supportive enough. It wasn't your classic Desi thing where oh, you, we're kicking you out of, out of the house. And, and it wasn't that, it wasn't a cliched uh, kind of thing, but they were worried. I think if your daughter were, wanted to be an actress, I don't know if you'd be, would you, would you be worried? Oh, absolutely. I would make sure that she got her education first. I'm big on education. Yes, yes. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't drop out of college. You know, I, I wanted to actually at a point, but I, I also don't like to quit. So I decided, let me finish college. And then I, I came to New York and did the off-off-Broadway theater scene and realized I really wanted to do film more. So I came to LA. So what would you consider your first big break in the professional realm? I would have to say my senior year when Mira and I cast me in The Namesake uh, was absolutely uh, a huge moment for me. I'll always be grateful to her for that. I had never been, I'd been in student films before that and I'd been acting for a while on stage before that but I'd never been in such a massive kind of big scale production. And it kind of happened almost by chance because the year prior, and this just goes to show you just never know what you're putting out into the universe. The year prior, Mira and I, who was an alumnus of Harvard, I guess, she came through uh, and was there to give a speech, and the South Asian Association decided to do a little show for her. So, as part of that show, I did a monologue, and she was there, she watched it, and then we had a Q&A with her, and I didn't think anything about it. But then a year later, she's casting Namesake. I go in and read for her, and again, don't think much about it, I leave back to college. I actually took a, a, a bus down from Boston to New York for the audition. Went back to college and didn't think much about it. And then uh, about a month later, I got a call from my manager who said she wants you in the movie. So it was, it was fantastic. And then, oh, and what was cool about that was that was uh, working with Irfan Khan. He had not been discovered yet by America. Uh, phenomenally talented actor, I think, as everybody knows now. But back then, I still remember being at the, at the table read, the initial table read for the namesake. I'm meeting this guy, like, it's fine, he gave me a handshake, whatever. It's like, okay, whatever. And we start reading the script, and I remember thinking, uh, every time he started reading, it was very much like, go, go, come here, go, go, do this. And, and I, I didn't think much about his performance, actually. I was a very naive, very arrogant, uh, I think, 22-year-old. And I thought, oh, who, whatever, who is this guy? And then I saw his performance on screen, and that was my first introduction to true screen acting. I mean, he had such subtlety, such nuance, uh, so many layers. It was all there in his voice, in his eyes, in his being. He was really so connected to it. And uh, it was a br brilliant performance, and, and the world took note. Mira Nair herself is a powerhouse of talent. She is. What do you think you learned from her that you've taken away as an actor? 
Well, we, we only had, I only worked with her a few days, but in those few days I saw that she had a real kind of um, take charge attitude. You know, she, she knew what she wanted and she was very strong and courageous. And obviously she'd had many experiences. I think it's a combination of personality and experience. By that point she'd shot a number of films and so it wasn't her first rodeo. But uh, I, I love that. I love seeing uh, Daisies, Daisy Americans, who are leaders. I think we talked about this a little yeah, bit. It makes, me, it makes me really happy. I feel like our community, sometimes we do just enough to make the middle, you know? Um, to, to, to do just enough. But I love it when people dream big and then, and then they take kind of leadership positions, kind of like what she's done. And she's kind of paved the way for, for others to follow, I think. Well, how long of a gap was it before the Cheetah Girls happened? Uh, so it was it was a gap. It was about, uh, gosh, so that was 22, maybe it was about three years before Cheetah Girls happened. And, you know, in between, the actor's life is hard. It's it's up and down. It, and, and even as you get more success, you're, it's still hard. You're just, you know, pushing yourself at a higher level. So at that point, I had just done Namesake and maybe one other film that was an indie film. And then I came to LA with my then fiance and thought, oh, I'm gonna, you know, book a guest star here, co-star there, and then things will be fine. And then of course, nothing happened, you know. Uh, as they say, I couldn't get arrested. Nobody uh, wanted to see me, nobody took me seriously. I was still, you know, very serious as an actor, taking classes, you know, pushing myself out there, but nothing happened. Uh, finally, Cheetah Girls came about because I remember this actually. <laughs> I was very upset, very frustrated because I knew that they were auditioning for the role of this character. His name was Raheem, Bollywood star. <laughs> and I told my agent, I said, you have to get me in for this because right. if you can't get me in to play this, this Bollywood, at least to audition, maybe I won't get cast, but at least to audition for this role, like, what are we doing here? Why are we working together? So then I got this last minute call to come in a few days before I was ready to go for Christmas break in New York, end of December. I go in and it all happened literally in one day. I come in in the morning, I read for the casting director. I uh, do my best to be a sexy Bollywood star. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know, I think uh, growing up every once in a while watching films like Kabi Kushi Kabi Gam and all that <laughs> definitely played a role. Um, and uh, a few days later I, I got the job. So. That was one of those weird instances where I thought I was never going to get seen. And oh, and by the way, in the interim, the really interesting thing is the casting directors had gone to India to find the star. So, so they looked in America, they said, we haven't found the person. They went to India to find their Bollywood star, were not satisfied with anybody, and then came back to LA, and that's when they auditioned me at the last minute. And since then, you've been busy, of course. Yes, I've been you busy. TV. So now, you know, in Royal Pains, and but again, about a, after Cheetah Girls happened, I think it was a scenario where I thought, oh, everything's gonna be great, but you know, I still had to really audition, and it took a while, but then about a year later, I booked uh, a great recurring role in Royal Pains. And again, I thought that was only going to last one episode or two episodes because we're guest stars, you never know. Right, um, of course. But they, I'm now in season four and I've had a nice uh, arc with, actually my co-lead's character's name is um, Reshma. Oh. My co my, she plays my fiance, and so her name is Reshma, um, on the show. And uh, we'll see. I mean, I, I came back for season four for the premiere episode and uh, the writers only know what uh, is in store for my character. In the meantime, you've done some movies as well. Yes, yes. I, uh, <laughs> Let's talk about yeah, those. Yeah, sure. So I guess I did. Um, I did Just Right, which was also which was produced by the producers of Cheetah Girls, um, which starred Queen, Queen Latifah and Common. It's a nice, fun, romantic comedy uh, around basketball, and I played one of Queen Latifah's um, colleagues. So that was fun. She's a she's a lovely person. So. I enjoyed working on that, and, and every film you work on you kind of learn, so it was cool. And then I uh, more recently worked with Justin Timberlake, you know, quick one day um, shoot for me, but I got to uh, be, I get to be one of the few people who says I dropped my pants for Justin Timberlake. <laughs> uh, you got a bromance it, going I got there. a bromance going with Justin Timberlake. Uh, the scene is basically I'm his co-worker. And he's my boss and he's like, give me your pants because he's got to go on a hot date and he right. just spilled coffee on his pants. And I say, no, that's weird. And he's like, I'm your boss. And so I think for a second and then I drop my pants, but I'm not wearing any underwear. Oh. So I had to, I had to be bare for my, uh, 
for my uh, shot there. What did your wife think of that? She wanted to do all kinds of treatments on my <laughs> and You know wives, they always want to groom you. They want to pluck your eyebrows, they want to wax you and all that. I'm like... You should use Uptan. <laughs> I should use Uptan. This is a plug for uh, I Uptan. did not say Rachel Uptan. <laughs> Tell me about your off-screen life. You were married yeah. to a very beautiful yes. woman. Yes, I'm married to... Uh, Ex-pageant oh, winner. Ex-pageant winner like yourself. So I think there's something really positive about that, clearly. Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, Ex-pageant winner, we met at Harvard. Uh, a force of nature, a, a loving, kind human being. Most importantly, a, a spectacular mother, um, my soulmate. And she gifted me a beautiful son, a future king. <laughs> I actually want a daughter next now, Aww. because daughter, and I love my son very much, but um, I think daughters just love their fathers. Whereas with sons, there's, there, you know that when he becomes a teenager, there's going to be some rebellion coming, so you're going to have some clash, and then you'll become best friends, hopefully, when he's in his 20s. So we enjoy seeing you on television regularly, but aside from that, what's coming our way? Well, there are a couple of films uh, that are in the works of being discussed will have been offered to me, but um, some of the things haven't been finalized. So I'll be able to return to you next time I come on the show and tell you more details once they're confirmed. But I'm excited about that because, uh, you know, I came out to LA for film. I'm, I'm very passionate about movies. I, I love them so much. I, and I like some TV, like HBO. I think I love Game of Thrones. I love Rome. It's an older show. But, um, but primarily, uh, movies are my passion. Um, so I'm excited about working more in that medium. Okay, in conclusion, on a lighter note, lighter note. tell us something that none of us know about you <laughs> as an exclusive. Oh gosh, that's such a curveball. What, what do you not, I'm such an open book. Um, that I was uh, second in the state uh, private school wrestling champion in high school. Wow, <laughs> congratulations, a yeah. little late, but regardless. A little, a little late, a little late. No, yeah, that's, I guess most people don't know that about me. I'm, you know, your daughter's an athlete, I think yes. that's fantastic. So yes. Daisy's doing athletics is, I think, a great thing. Well, it was great chatting with you, and we look forward to chatting with you again on the red carpet and off of it too. I as well, thank you for having me. <laughs>